The if function is one of the most important formulas to learn in Excel. It can help us with comparing data, performing lookups to group data, and even making your reports interactive. In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know to get started with the if function. This includes writing the basic formula, writing more advanced formulas for multiple criteria using AND and OR logic. We will also look at alternatives to the IF function and what the most common causes of errors are in your formulas. So this video will be great for anyone that's just getting started with IF or if you need a refresher. So let's dive in and learn IF. So I believe the best way to learn the if function is to practice. So I'll make this file I'm using available for free download and put a link to that in the description below. So go ahead and pause the video, download the file and follow along. And then we'll also have a free challenge for you that you can take after watching this video that will help you test your skills and improve. So in this first example, we have a simple data set where we're comparing the revenue and goal and then using an if formula to determine if we've hit the goal or not. So I actually have the if formula written out here and we're going to rewrite it. But before we do that, I'll quickly explain the function and its arguments. So the if function has three arguments. The first is the logical test. And this is where we're doing a comparison of cell B4, which contains our revenue and checking if it's greater than or equal to cell C4, which contains our goal. And if it is, if it's true, then the value of true is going to return a yes and if not, the value if false is going to return a no. So the definition of the if function here is that it checks whether a condition is met, in this case, if the revenue is greater than or equal to the goal, and returns one value if true and another value if false. Now the most important part of the if function is the logical test. So we're gonna jump over to this logical test sheet here and I'll explain more about logical tests. So right here we have this same data set, but in cell D4 here, we're just going to type a very simple formula, which is equals, then we're going to select cell B4, and then we're going to again use greater than or equal to, so type that in, and then cell C4, select cell C4 and hit enter. And that's going to return a true value because in this case, the revenue is greater than or equal to the goal. I'll go ahead and double click the fill handle here to copy the formula down. And you can see that we just get a column of true or false values. And when the revenue is not greater than or equal to the goal, like it is in this case, a false value is returned. So this is very important because the logical test argument within the if function needs a true or false value. And in order to make these comparisons, we use the comparison operators in Excel. So I have a list of those comparison operators on this sheet here. And of course, uh, some of these are very obvious, like the equal to or the equal symbol will uh, compare equals to. We have not equal to, which is the less than and greater than symbol combined. We have greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. So whenever we're doing a logical test, a comparison between two values, like we are on this sheet here, we're going to need to use one of those comparison operators to make that comparison. Now, of course, you might want to compare more than two values, and we'll talk about that in this video as well, but it's very important to first just understand how to perform a logical test. And then one other thing to note here is this might be all that you need. In this case here with this column, if we're asking the question, did we hit the goal or not, true and false values might be all we need to return there to answer the question. But if you want to return a different value besides true or false, that's where the if function comes in. So let's jump over to the if formula sheet and we'll go ahead and write out the if formula. So again, we have the same data set here. We're going to type equals and then if, and as you can see, we have the if function here. I'll hit the tab key to tab into that and open the parentheses. Again, we're going to need our logical test. So that's going to be B4. And then again, we'll type greater than or equal to and select cell C4. Now we'll type a comma. And here for the value if true, we want to return the word yes. And anytime we're returning text, we're going to wrap that in quotation marks. So open quotes, yes, and then quotation marks. Value if false, after the comma, we'll, uh, put, for, we'll put no for that. Again, you can put anything you want. If you're going to return a number, you do not need to wrap that in quotation marks. Uh, and then we'll close the parentheses there, hit enter. And as you can see, that's going to run that logical test. And then in this case, since it's true, it's going to return the yes. Again, I'll double click the fill handle there to copy that down. And we get our column of yes and no values. 
And then one other thing to note is that the second and third arguments are optional, but at least one of those must be specified. And if you don't specify one, it's just going to return a true or false. So just sh to just show that really quickly, we'll just edit this formula here. And instead of uh, specifying no for the value of false, we're just going to leave that off. It's an optional argument. That's why it has those square brackets around it. So we don't necessarily, it's not required. We don't need it. And if we leave it off, we'll just go ahead and hit enter there. That's going to return a yes. But if I copy this down, you can see that a false is now returned because we did not specify the value of false argument. So one of the most common uses for the if function is to group or categorize data, which really helps with data analysis. And we're going to take a look at a few examples of that. So we'll jump over to the grouping with if sheet here. And on this sheet, we have some sales transaction data. And we want to group these amounts into either the size large or small categories based on this criteria here is that if the amount is greater than or equal to 50,000, it'll be large. If it's less than 50,000, it'll be small. So we can use an if formula for this and we'll type it right here in the size column. We'll type equals if, we'll tab into that. For our logical test, we're gonna compare the amount in this row, so select cell D7. We're gonna say, is that greater than or equal to? And then we're gonna select cell D4, which contains the amount of 50,000. Now we're gonna make this an absolute reference. So we'll hit F4 on the keyboard, add the dollar symbols, and that way this reference won't change as we copy the formula down. Now we're going to type a comma and for our value of true, of course, we could type the word large in here, but my preferred method is to reference a cell that contains that phrase. And in this case, cell E4 contains the phrase. So we'll select E4. Again, we're going to make that an absolute reference. So we'll hit F4 on the keyboard, type a comma. And then for the value of false, if it's not greater than or uh, equal to 50,000, then we want to return the word small. So we'll select uh, cell E3, again, F4 to make that an absolute reference, close the parentheses and hit enter. And since I'm using an Excel table, that's going to fill the formula down. And as you can see, we get a column with small and large values. And this helps us analyze this data. There's a few ways we can do that. Uh, first of all, we can hit the filter dropdown here. And if we just wanted to see our large transactions, we can of course filter for those. And now we can see all of our large transactions. We could also use this on a summary report or pivot table, which I have on this sheet here. I've added that size field to the rows area here in this pivot table. Now I can see a sum of amount by size, also percent of total. And I've even added this uh, pie chart that also, also visualizes that data. And there's one other thing I want to quickly mention back on our grouping with if sheet here. The reason I made these cell references here for the value of true and value of false and even this amount here, instead of hard coding or typing those into the formula, is that we can quickly change them. So if the boss comes to us and said, actually, you know, our large accounts are greater than or equal to 60,000 and we're going to call those key accounts, we can quickly make those changes right to these cells right here. So we'll type 60,000 instead, hit enter. Instead of large, we want to call these key accounts and our formulas will automatically update because they reference these cells. So as you can see, if we clear the values here, now all of our uh, values either say small or key based on that new criteria. And we don't have to go into our formulas and modify any values. So it's more dynamic and less maintenance, which means mess, less potential errors in the future. So next we'll take a look at some ways to perform more than one logical test because typically our lives are never this simple where we just have one logical test. So we'll first jump over to the and or functions sheet. And this is a similar data set, but here in this column, we want to evaluate if the uh, product size is large or the value size is large and the product is equal to product six. So for this, we can use the and function. So we'll start typing equals and, and uh, as you can see here, and checks whether all arguments are true and returns true if all arguments are true. So we'll tab into that and and allows us to specify multiple logical tests. Uh, you can have two or more logical tests. So our first logical test is if this uh, size is going to be equal to large. So we'll say equals there and then we'll select large right here hit F4 on the keyboard to again make that an absolute reference. Our second logical test is if the product in this row is equal to, so we'll type equals to uh, product six, which we have right here in cell F4. Again, we wanna make that an absolute reference so it doesn't change as we copy the formula down. We'll close the parentheses now and hit enter. 
and that's going to give us this column of true and false values. So the AND function just returns a true or false value. It's going to return a true when all of the logical tests within AND return a true. And that happens right here in this row. We can see the size is large and the product equals six. So here we have a true. Now we can also use the OR function to test if just one of those logical tests is true. And we'll do that in this column here. In this case, we want to see if the size is large or the product equals product five. So again, we'll type equals or, and as you can see, or checks whether any of the arguments are true and returns a true or false, returns false only if all arguments are false, which the opposite means if only one is true, it'll return a true. So we'll tab into that. Our first logical test will be uh, the product here, I'm sorry, the size. I'm gonna say, is that equal to large? Again, F4 on the keyboard, type a comma. Our second logical test will be if the product and we'll select cell C7 equals, and then we'll say product five, again, F4 to make that an absolute reference, close the parentheses and hit enter. And now again, we get this column of true and false values. Now the nice part about and and or is we can use it within if. So since this returns a true or false, if we want to return something different than true or false, right here, we can add this to an if function. So I'll type if here, tab into that, the OR function here is going to be our entire logical test. It actually has multiple logical tests, which is great. And now we just need to specify a value of true and a value of false. So in this case here, we might say uh, for value of true, maybe these customers are eligible for an upgrade. So we might just type something, just hard code a value in here for now, let's call it upgrade. And then if it's false, maybe we wanna return a blank. And in that case, we can just type two quotation marks uh, with nothing between them close the parentheses there and hit enter. And now we have a nice column that just shows upgrades in the row where the customer is eligible for an upgrade. Okay, so now let's look at another type of formula with multiple logical tests. We're going to jump over to the nested if sheet. And in this example here, we have the same data set, but we want to group this into three different groups or categories being small, large, and key accounts based on these criteria here. So we can also use if for this, and we'll also look at some alternatives because as we'll see, if can get a bit challenging and we call these nested ifs. So we'll start with our first if, so we'll type if, we'll tab into that. And for our logical test, when we have uh, values like this, I typically like to go from largest to smallest in terms of evaluating the criteria. So we're gonna compare our amount and we're gonna say, is that greater than or equal to and then we're gonna select our largest value, which is 75,000. Again, we'll hit F4 on the keyboard to make that an absolute reference. So if that is true, we want to return the word key. So we'll select key here, again, F4 on the keyboard. If that's false, we need to do another if statement to evaluate whether it's large or small. So for our value of false argument, we can also put a formula in here and we're gonna type equals, or I'm sorry, we're gonna type if We'll tab into that. So we're gonna run another logical test. Again, we're going to compare our amount. And again, we'll say greater than or equal to. And now we're going to select our next uh, largest value, which is 10,000, D4. Again, F4 on the keyboard there. If that's true, we're going to return the word large. We'll hit F4 on the keyboard there. If it's false, we want to then return our last value here, which is small. So we'll select E3, again, F4 on the keyboard. We'll go ahead and close the parentheses on that if formula. And now we'll also have the value if false if argument for our original if statement here. And again, since this is optional, we don't need to specify it. Uh, that criteria won't come up or that logic shouldn't come up ever. If it does, it's just going to return a false, but we'll just put nothing there and add the additional close of parentheses. And again, that parentheses is going to be for our first if statement. So we have our entire formula there. We'll hit enter and we get this column with our size values. And as you can see, it is returning all of those size values. As I said, this formula can be a little bit challenging, especially if you're writing this out or if you stumble on one of these nested ifs and you have even more criteria and it's even longer, uh, these formulas can get ugly pretty quick. So there are some alternatives to this. The first one is the ifs function. This is a relatively new function introduced in Excel 2019 or later. So you will have to be on a modern version of Excel. Uh, but the ifs function allows you to specify multiple logical tests or statements here 
within the function and then specify the value if true after it. So it still requires a lot of selection here and a, a lot of logical tests. However, it is a little bit easier to write these out and also uh, read these formulas, especially if you have more than uh, three groups. So that's ifs there. We won't go into it in too much detail. Another option is a VLOOKUP. And we can actually use VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP or index match, any of those lookup formulas uh, to return the same results. And I have the VLOOKUP formula here. As you can see, it's a very simple function compared to the nested ifs. And we just have our four arguments here. And the most important thing is the last argument is true, which gives us that closest or approximate match to evaluate the values, uh, the amount value against these values up here. And I have a separate video that explains this in more detail. I'll put a link to that in the description below. And finally, I want to talk about the most common errors that you might encounter. And that happens with your logical tests. So we'll go over to this logical test errors sheet. And here I have a uh, few different logical tests, mostly based on data types. So as you can see, this formula here is just uh, a formula that it, uh, compares A4 to B4, or the first column to the second column, all the way down, and returning true or false values. So of course, when we're comparing text and the text is not the same, that's going to return a false. Same when we're comparing numbers and those numbers aren't the same, of course, that's going to return a false. In this case here, uh, the numbers are the same, but the number formatting is different. And that does not matter to the logical test. Uh, it's still going to return a true uh, because both of these numbers are two. They're just formatted differently. In this case here, we have a number in this cell and then text in this cell. That's going to return a false. Excel is not going to figure out that this means a one and, and return a true. That's going to be a false because we're comparing text to a number. In this case here, we have two dates. Now these dates are the same date value, but again, they're formatted differently. One way to check that is if we select the cell here and look in the formula bar, you can see the date and its uh, default format. If we select this cell here, you can also see the date and its default format. And of course, both of those values are the same. So this logical test here is going to return a true. In this example down here, this cell is actually uh, stored as text. You can see that with the error there in the corner. And so this is text, this is a date value or a number, and so therefore this comparison returns a false. So my point here is that the data types are important, number formatting is not important, and when you're getting errors or the incorrect results in your if formulas, most likely due to it being the incorrect data type that you're comparing. So it's definitely something to look at and keep in mind when you're writing your if formulas. So I hope you found this training valuable. The next step is to test your skills with our if formula challenge. The challenge will contain additional practice examples along with a video where I walk through these solutions. To access the challenge, you can click the link in the description below. If you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button and then leave a comment below with any questions or feedback. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.